and welcome to Owen Brandy's channel. If this is your first time stopping by, you are most definitely welcome. And if it's not, welcome back. You have your face here, okay? <laughs> You're self-proclaimed <laughs> faves, okay? Um, my name is Owen Brandy. If you've never watched any of my videos before, I'm really glad that you stopped by on this one. This is my dear husband. Wait, do you want to introduce yourself? My name is Olumide. Yes, his name is Olumide. Olumide! <laughs> Yes, his name is Olumide. Olumide, babe, I think you, you might need to talk a little louder. Yeah, for sure. Just so they can hear you. Yeah, so let's get into it. We don't want to waste too much time because we want this video to be like fast in yeah, and out. Um, we got like hundreds yeah, much a of questions. Q&A, yeah. Yeah, we got hundreds of questions for this Q&A, so we don't want to waste too much time. We want it to be in and out, in and out, in and out. So let's get into it. We'll start with a bit of the personal questions. Yeah, just a bit of background. Yeah. So it says, where are you from? That's the first question that we got. We have all the questions written down here, so in case we're looking for yeah. no, no. So where are you from? I'm originally Nigerian. I'm from Ogun State, but I live in Lagos State. Yeah, um, I'm Nigerian too, if it's obvious. Um, and yeah, I'm from Lagos State. Lagos State, perfect. Um, and someone asked us why we're married so early. Yeah, it's just good. It's good. That's the only thing you need to know. The reason why we're married this early, it's God. It is by God's grace. I feel like God wants us to do so much together. Yeah. Um, very Starting from now, which is why we had to meet each other at the time that we met each other. We met each other in the first year of university, which is obviously another answer to someone else's question. First year of university and we dated ever since. No, we never broke up in between. We dated throughout university. We got married two years after graduating and yeah. That's pretty yeah, much. That's pretty much. She, she summarized everything. Yeah, like, the course of our lives. We have yeah, lots of videos talking about our relationship story. I'll try and link it somewhere on top so we can catch those videos. I'll read it out. If you have a man who is morally right, has good character, but he is spiritually lacking, he believes in God, he prays when you initiate it without arguments, but he still needs to grow, which means he doesn't really have a relationship with God. Is it worth it to compromise on it? Okay, so I guess the person is asking that her person or whoever she's talking to is morally right. Um, they can pray when they, you know, yeah. when you initiate the prayer. It's not like they'll be the one to bring up prayers and everything. Um, yeah, but I think... But the person doesn't have a relationship, relationship with God. Is it worth it to compromise on it? Honestly, if you want my answer, my answer will be no. It's not worth it. I'm not saying that this partner of yours or this person you're talking to has to be on the same level um, spiritually as you because obviously people grow differently. Yeah, different. People are on different levels at different times. But at least this person has to know that Jesus Christ is his Lord and personal savior. Does he at least know that? If he knows that, then we can kind of work with that. Even though some people will say, you know what, like yeah. if he's not at a particular level, to me, I don't believe that his his tongues need to sound like Greek. I don't believe that he, he needs to be able to pray um, seven hours a day or whatever. But is he willing to grow? Yeah. Is he willing to try? You can kind of, if honestly, it then depends on you. I don't want to tell you yes or no. But if it's that he's not even, he's not saved, then I'll say don't do it. Don't do it because you're gonna regret it eventually. It's usually not worth it. We don't do ev evangelical dating over yeah. here. Let this person come to the knowledge of God themselves because you don't want a situation where down the line they're like, oh, but it is because of you that I decided to do this. And if you're no longer in my life, then I'm no longer yeah. saved, if that makes sense. Yeah. And what I'll just say is that being morally right it's does not, not substitute your relationship with God. Um, so it's very, very important that you guys be equally yoked and another thing too is it's um intentions mm. his intentions are very very important like she said if he does not have the right intention mm. to grow or actually come into a relationship with god and deep down you know what his intentions are you just mm -hmm. know okay he's trying to play around <laughs> he's not really taking it seriously right. then, yeah what advice is that don't go down that road so it's usually never worth it it's yeah. not worth it. next question so it says i started dating someone when i was in the world and uh, now I gave my life to Christ and I want to be intentional about it. So part of the things I did was to be celibate. 
but I don't think he understands what it means to be celibate. And I've tried to explain, but every time I do, he makes me feel like I'm doing the most and I know he loves me, but this is a big deal for me, so I really don't know what to do. Can you help please? Wow. Olu, you, you wanna go? When it comes to pleasing God, hmm. there's nothing like doing the most. Hmm. That's yeah. so good. When it comes to pleasing God, do not compromise on it. Yeah. Um, you live in a life of purity, a life that pleases God is very, very important. It is. If you do decide, you become a celibate to something that makes God happy because you are doing His will. Yeah. So if someone is making you feel like yeah, being extra about it, about it, and, then, and she also mentioned that he doesn't understand what it means to be celibate. Well, rather than even saying celibate, I'll say to live a life of purity. It's not worth it. It is not worth it. It means that that person is not for you in this season. Maybe later down the line, he yeah. would um, give his life to Christ and then he would, you know, live for God. He'll be sold out for Jesus. But until that point, I'll say, don't don't stress yourself. Don't go into and, it. It's usually not worth it at all. And I'll also say that analyze the purpose as to why you guys are even together mm, in the first exactly. place. Exactly. You mentioned when you guys were together, you did not give your life to Christ. Now that you I'm giving your life to Christ and you're a new creature. You need to reevaluate that relationship and yeah. know what is the purpose of this relationship. Exactly. How does this even link to Christ? How does this link to my entire journey on this yeah. earth? Exactly. That's so, so good. Next question says, did you guys fall after giving your life to Christ? I guess the person is talking about like um, sexual sin. If you did, how did you overcome that? Um, I would say that we definitely had moments of weaknesses 100% throughout our relationship But it was that whenever we fell we didn't stay in that place But we got out of it if we fall we're falling to our knees if we fall we're going back to God Because what the devil wants is that no. you stay in the place Sorry. of condemnation You stay in the place where you feel like God has rejected you you stay in the place of guilt But we never did that and practical steps a lot and <laughs> a lot of people asked about practical steps um, when it comes to boundaries and when it comes to sexual purity i would say number one you have to know yourself you have to know what um what your triggers are for some people a, a simple hug like this is fine but some for some people just that little hug yeah. like this is already setting triggers pa, 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 yeah. in the entire throughout the entire body so if you know that that is you let your partner fro know from the get-go that i'm not keen to hugging maybe holding hands is, the, is yeah. the most i can do maybe this and that is the most i can do um just they understand that and also you know be very intentional about not staying over at each other's, uh, each other's places, places yeah. you or know, staying too late. Or too. staying too late. Um, even staying alone together. Sometimes could be exactly because <laughs> little drops of water makes the mighty ocean. Yeah. If you keep doing like those little little things, what you realize that is happening is that your boundaries are getting yeah. pushed back more and more, and then one day you realize that you and sometimes, are defiling the marriage bed. And that's why sometimes you might feel like, oh, well, you guys have gone so long without mm -hmm. actually doing anything, and mm -hmm. then you realize, oh, yeah, a particular day came and you guys fell. fell yeah. Right. So it's not just that. It's it didn't just happen. Going on right. Little by little. Exactly. So just, um, are there, uh, I'm thinking, are there any other boundaries you can set? There are lots and of boundaries. I mean, um, if you guys have mentors or accountability, um, accountability partners, partners or mentors, it's mm, yeah, that's very important. To order to. That's very, very, very important. That's a good one. Um, also, just keep praying about it. The most important thing is that you are you are living a life of faith. You are living a life that's dedicated to God, and keep trying to grow your spiritual life because the more that you grow spiritually, the more that you die to flesh. There are two things that we humans in this world are meant to overcome. Number one is sin, and number two is the flesh. Oh, the um, sin has already been overcome through Christ Jesus, but fr you cannot overcome your flesh until you die daily to yeah, self. So yeah. you. You have to die daily. What does it look like dying daily? It means you're praying daily, reading, studying your Bible, getting to know God more. The more you're growing spiritually, the less your flesh is being fed. And there's one more thing I want to say is that um, both of you need to also be aligned. Mm. It's very, very important because if one person is saying, yeah, I do not want us to fall. I want us to be very intentional right. about setting boundaries. But the other person, they know that they are not interested in doing any Thing like that mm. then yeah it's going to be so hard for you guys to actually do what you want to do yes definitely and these are things that practical things that we also did in our relationship yeah. that really helped us and i'll say to be honest don't date until you know that you're kind of in a place where 
in a couple months, couple years, you're ready to get married because yeah. you don't want to be. Um, um, how does the Bible say it now? It's, you don't want to be awakening desires when it's not the right time. So please don't. You don't need to date if you know that. Um, which is something that you know in us obviously us we started dating kind of early yeah. earlier on but sometimes we would even say that we would have preferred to date, meet later yeah, in life and yeah. start dating then when we kind of knew ourselves better we kind of had a better understanding of who we were as individuals and who we were in Christ so yes don't go about awakening desires when you're not ready <laughs> so next question how do you deal with friendship breakups babe now you know what let me ask you a question let's let's look at each other right now um have you do you would you say that you've ever had a friendship breakup a friendship well <clears throat> i do not think so okay i'm the type of person that number one i don't like to burn bridges completely mm. um and number two i'm i'm very calm so like if if i should notice that okay this person is trying to move mad or funny <laughs> <laughs> I would just give you your space. Like mm. I don't have time for trouble a while mm -hmm. in my life. Right. Like I don't I don't think I can deal with that. So I don't think I've actually dealt with it yet per se, so I don't know. Yeah, so I do I also um friend I think I've had friendship breakups, but it's not like we go from being friends to being not friends at all. It's more like we go from being friends to like this yeah, it just the friendship just is away a little yeah. bit in a way where we're not as close as we used to but we can hold at each other we can speak yeah. to each other we can talk to each other that kind of thing but i'll say dealing with friendship breakup is kind of similar to dealing with like a real breakup it's more like um identifying that um come come to uh what's the word what's the word when you're not in denial don't be in denial that oh maybe maybe it's just in my head maybe it's this come to terms with yeah. the situation um it's it's sometimes difficult because there are many things that you would have been doing with that person and together and then anymore. you don't do it anymore and it's like but you don't even want to take up those hobbies up. anymore but and it also depends on the reason why you guys are mm -hmm. breaking, are breaking up. up yeah um but the bible says that at all times ensure that you are at peace with all men mm. so ensure that it's not a situation where you guys are breaking up and then it's toxic and you're yeah. like, you start calling each other on instagram <laughs> or calling out, <laughs> calling them, out. <laughs> each other on instagram we don't do calling out yeah. over here yeah. just we, make we, sure we, that we, it's, we it's, do it's as peaceful um, as possible uh, yeah, as possible, yeah. Yeah, I would, yeah i would definitely say the same thing make sure it's as peaceful as possible um yeah and also i was i was trying to tell them some things about it, you made me lose my train of thought. Mm. I'm trying to tell them some things about how to overcome a friendship breakup. Yeah. So yeah, distract yourself with other, pick up new hobbies, pick up new habits that would kind of just distract you from that place where you where you were. So um, yeah, honestly, I, I can't really tell you too much about that because it's not something I've experienced personally. Yeah. Um. Oh, someone said, love you so much, Oi, and all the content you put out. I love you guys so much as well. Thank you so much. Um, so what advice will you give for someone who left a two-year toxic, long-distance, ungodly relationship? Jesus! Two years, toxic, long-distance, ungodly, bruh. <laughs> and now has find her, found her identity in Christ, hallelujah, and is about to enter a godly relationship with someone who seeks the heart of God as well. Bless wow. you, Yahweh! <laughs> um, it just goes back to what we were saying that Honestly, you don't you don't know what's best for you. You don't have the best um, ideas for your life. You don't have the you, you 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 really cannot make the best decision for yourself. It is God that makes the best decisions for you. He says um, His thoughts and His plans for us are for good and not for evil to give us an um, a future and a hope. So know that God's plans for you are always good. I'm very proud of you that you were even able to identify, you know, the yeah. toxicity in the other relationship, and now you're moving forward. I'll say take it slow um, because it's, you you were in a two year relationship. That's a long time to yeah. be dedicated to someone else. Take it slow. Um, share with your partner some things that you realize you identified in that other relationship that you know you didn't like, so that you, he can also work on that as well. Um, yeah, be transparent with each other. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I stole this from you. Sorry, baby. Be transparent with each other. Is there anything else you want to add? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just new? be very transparent about it. Um, 
don't keep secrets. Yes. Um, that's very important. And yes. I'm sure that God is at the center yes. of you know, the relationship that you're entering into. Yeah. And sure God is at the center. Guys, commun communicate with each other. Um, don't sweep things under the carpet. Talk yeah. to each other about anything and everything. Perfect. So next question. What's the, your best advice for someone getting married in a month? In a month. Oh wow. Um would you pray. Are you stole that from me? Pray, pray without season. season. Like yeah, do not pray season. all the time. Pray. That's the only thing you can do. Your prayers will go before you and make Amen. sure that that day is clear Amen. and smooth. And Amen. I pray that God will make everything go well. Amen. Just Amen. pray. That's the only thing you can do. Mm -hmm. That's the only advice we can give you. Pray, pray. a lot because mm -hmm. there's so many things that can come up that even you would have never imagined it could right. be a problem. Right. So ensure that you pray as much as you can. Pray in alignment with your partner so yeah. you guys should come together, uh, yes. pray together, Definitely. and everything will go well. That's the only thing we can advise. Yes, exactly. And next question, is seeking a sign from God advisable to know if your current partner is your spouse? Um, I would not necessarily say seeking a sign, but I would say definitely um, bringing God into that relationship. And also, um, there's this Bible verse that you've been on lately. So trust the Lord with all your heart, lean on, on your, your own understanding, understanding, in all your in ways, all your ways acknowledge, acknowledge Him. And exactly. And your path straight. Amen. And the other thing I also want to say is that, how do you hear from God? Because you have to know how you hear from him. God. Because, mm. you know, you might be seeking a sign and if you don't even know how to how you hear from God, it's very easy for you to just think a sign is something when it's yeah, not. When it's not. Mm. Yeah, so it's very important. And also, to don't seek the miraculous. Like, God speaks to you in the still small yeah. voice. He speaks to you anyhow. Don't be waiting to hear the audible voice of yeah. God. I just be that whisper, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, you know, for some people, the way God speaks to them is through peace. They just have that yeah, peace in their heart. Peace, yeah. For me, the way God speaks to me is through of knowing, a strong knowing in my heart, strong impression upon my heart. So, know how God speaks to you yes totally ask him if this person you're talking to is supposed to be your future spouse and read the bible a lot study the word because study the word yeah speak to you through that too. exactly so we decided to switch our positions a bit just be yeah. more cozy and more comfortable yeah. first question is how do i grow into manifestation of my calling how do i train up my spiritual life and not fall back into old ways so a very big part of this is that you cannot do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. You need God's grace, right. um, you need God's strength. It's not by your own ability. Mm -hmm. If you try to do things with the power of the flesh, you know, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. um, so the most important thing is acknowledging and surrendering everything mm -hmm. to God um, and letting God be the one in control. And this means that your prayer points need to be very strategic mm -hmm. and praying that God would be at the center. Right. Pray that God will give you the grace to be able to follow him mm -hmm. to live a life of righteousness mm -hmm. is not with your own ability it's by god's grace it's by it's him strengthening you so it's very very important to ensure that you are praying prayer points that enables god to be at the center and god take control yeah. of this and i believe that if god is the one that's directing you if you are trusting in god completely then 100 percent you will live a life of purpose right exactly trust in the lord completely acknowledge him in all your ways make sure that you're not making any whether major or minor decision without involving god and getting his opinion and uh, you realize that everything is falling into exactly its place. and the other thing i just wanted to say in terms of you mentioned about going into the manifestation of your calling just know that so typically when you live a life of purpose mm. there are three things that are evident you live in a life that glorifies god right. living a life that pleases god and living a life that advances the kingdom of god mm. so if you're doing all of these three things they're pretty much they're already in your calling because mm -hmm. of those are pretty much the things that god has called us to do on earth yeah. so ensure that your prayer points are like you're living a life that pleases Jesus god, god. you're praying that you're living a life that glorifies god and you're living a life that advances the kingdom of god exactly to sum it up basically knowing god for yourself and also making him known to other people yeah do i need a spiritual leader and how do i choose one um i'll say definitely you need a spiritual leader and i feel like that's something that's really lacking um in today's world a lot of you know christian ministers that are coming up but one thing that they are lacking is yes. 
discipleship. They, are, they, they haven't been discipled anywhere or they're not being discipled anywhere. You can, God did not create us to walk by ourselves. You cannot do life alone. You cannot do ministry alone. You need to be discipled. And this is why you see a lot of people are cut, like, you know, they're on fire today, but tomorrow they're back to the streets. And that's not God's plan. You need pe- people, a community, a pastor, a yeah. spiritual leader that is guiding you on the right path, that is pushing you on the right path. Like No one, no yeah. one ever did life even alone. your pastors have pastors. Exactly. Even your pastors have pastors. Even your pastors have mentors. Um, yeah, you know, so for some reason, some people don't believe in belonging to a local church. I believe in belonging to a local church. Um, belong to a local church. Iron sharpeneth iron, right? You, yeah. you cannot, you cannot do life alone. You need to be pastored, in, even though you are growing in whatever capacity um, that God is, God has called you to grow. Even when you become a pastor on your own, like we are pastors, but we definitely have a pastor as well. Next question. Hello, Oyade and Olumide. Hi. <laughs> what was growing as a as new Christians like for you as a couple? Did you both understand and agree with bi- biblical concepts at the same pace or differently? And how did that impact your relationship? But do you think we both grew spiritually like at the same time? Do you think we were at the same level at the same time? I'm trying think, to think back at the time. Well, so for a bit of context, I know that we both actually started going to church um, properly when we were not. Third, third year of university, yeah. yes, yes. So we, I believe we were exposed to similar concepts at the mm, same time. Exactly. Yes. I think we pretty much both grew at the same time and it was always a situation where if one person was even praying more, reading the Bible more, mm-hmm. um, it automatically rubbed on the other person. Rubbed off on the other person, yeah. exactly. Um, I would say we both, for the most part, understood biblical concepts the same way at the same time. Um, obviously, there will be seasons where one person is more on fire than the other person, you know, because life happens and things just happen. But for the most part, we both grew at the same pace. But I've heard situations where, you know, maybe the lady is more spiritually inclined than the guy or the guy is more spiritually inclined than the lady. I'll say that as much as both parties are willing to grow, yeah. um, you, you both can it's- help each other. You can help each other out. Yeah, and, and another thing too is that sometimes um, when we look at spiritual inclination, sometimes people mistake it with gifts because hmm. it's very possible for one person to have get gifts that are that, pretty that much are external. Exactly, that shows hmm. off a lot. That is so good. And, and then sometimes people will just be like, well, yes, this person is more spiritual than the other person. Yeah. But it does not mean that at the end of the hmm. day, our walk with God is very different. Exactly. The relationship with God. Only God knows what are those that are serving. Exactly. And that's why they are gifts. Um, the Bible says that by their fruits, we shall know, know them. them. By their actions. So basically, spiritual manifestations of gifts doesn't always mean um, relationship with God. Yeah. Right? Some people have. Um, spiritual manifestations like the gift of speaking in tongues and um, prophecy and word of knowledge and all that stuff but other people might have the gift of teaching they might have um even the gift of hospitality for example but those may not necessarily look like what the anointing that we are looking for but that's that's why we're human human beings are attracted to the physical but god is the one that sees the heart what is inside so yes any word of encouragement for a girl who loves jesus and wants to be more bold more outspoken about christ and just do away with timidity low self-esteem and lack of confidence well that's a beautiful one i would say that um take it one day at a time um pray for the spirit of boldness guys pray (laughs) pray for the spirit of boldness it is a spirit that must come upon you as a christian pray for the spirit of boldness because it is through the spirit of boldness that you'll be able to even speak about your faith sometimes people are not don't want to speak about about their faith not because they're ashamed of it but because they 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 don't have enough confidence to do so and also um surround yourself with like-minded people surround yourself with people that are living 
for the faith, living in the faith, and also speaking about the faith, people that are not ashamed to share their testimonies and where they're at in their spiritual lives as well. Um, yeah. Is there anything else? Yeah, I'll just point to what she said, mm-hmm. you know, people that are around you definitely makes a difference. Yes. Um, the confidence that you can get. If you have people around you that are encouraging you, mm. people that are looking to grow their relationship with God, right. it, it, it could make a very big difference compared to if you're around people that are like, oh, why do you want to do it? Mm. That I'm not scared that you'd be disgraced. Mm. How about if it doesn't work? So I feel like it definitely makes a big difference. And the most important thing is just, you know, ensuring that you are trusting God. Because God, like you said, God is the one that will give you the spirit of right, confidence. You can't right. do it by yourself. So just really having that understanding that at the end of the day, mm. nothing you do can be better than if God does it. Exactly. Exactly. That is so, so good. Um, how do you trust God without doubt? Hmm. That is a beautiful one. How do you trust God without doubt? I'm really struggling here. Wow. Okay. Shall I take it? Do you wanna, yeah, if you want to take it, for sure. Um. Well... She knows, that I'm, and I keep on saying this, there's Bible verse that I just keep on um, meditating on, and that's, you know, trusting in the Lord with all your hearts, leaning not on your own understanding, you know, every acknowledging, and it will make your path straight. So, in terms of trusting God, one thing I'll say is, um, look back, think about different ways that God has come through for you, mm-hmm. you know, think about it. God has come through for us in different ways. Yes. Count your blessings. Look back at it. Look at how you're feeling. I'm pretty sure that right now mm. um, you're living prayer points that you once prayed for. Mm. So looking back, you know, thinking about that, that definitely will encourage you. Mm. And another thing too is reading the word of God. Mm. Reading the word of God. Um, God's word is alive. Mm. It will definitely speak to you. It, it's, it's easier for you to trust someone that you know. It's easier for you to trust someone mm. that you have knowledge that is about. So good. If you do not know God, it's, it's harder for you it's to... A, if you do not know yeah, God, it's, it's impossible to trust It's impossible for you him. to trust them. Mm. So you reading the Bible, you know, it definitely will encourage you a whole lot more. Mm-hmm. And for you to even trust God, yeah, you need to trust God. And it's rare that I put it like that. Mm. But you bringing God at the center and saying, God, please, I want to trust you more. Mm. God will definitely give you opportunities for you to trust, trust him. Trust him, yeah. Seek his face in the, in the little things. Um, look at ways, in the little ways that he's come through for you. Yeah. He's been God over your life. And look at those situations. I know that if God could have done this for you, yeah. he can do it again. And yeah. another thing is looking and um, rejoicing with other people's testimonies, right? Because what does testimony mean? Testimony literally means do it again or do it over. It is telling God that because you have done this, I believe that you can do it for me too. So, yeah, the most important thing is that you definitely cannot trust a God that you do not know. So, come into the knowledge of God first and yeah. you can trust Him from there. And the final question, guys, we really, really summarized. We answered multiple questions together. That's so it'll be easy, but let's just take this as the final one is how do you hear from God? I think I already kind of spoke about this yeah. um, in this video already. For me, it's the strong impression upon my heart. And you know, when, when I just feel peace about something, basically, yeah, strong impression upon my heart. How yeah. do you hear from God, babe? Yeah, um, for me, I, it's just the same. You just feel this peace, um, mm, my, yeah. feel this strong impression. Sometimes, um, well, one thing I just want to say first is reading the Bible is very, very important. Yeah. You, very God important. is always speaking through His speaking. Word. Yeah, you will catch things 100%. Mm-hmm. Reading the Bible and meditating on the Word of God. Mm-hmm. Um, and also being obedient to little instructions. Mm-hmm. Um, there are some times that I literally can just be sitting down and it does just come to my head. And sometimes it feels like it's your mind, mm-hmm. but it's not. And then being obedient to that. Um, once you're obedient, little things that you know that 100%, it feels like the right thing for you to do. Then it's easier for you to hear more. Um, if if you're not obedient, if things come into your mind and then you you're just sleeping under the rug, then um, yeah. obviously it's be more difficult. Exactly. Um, so yeah, being obedient is very very important. When you read the Word of God and you meditate on it and mm. It speaks to you being obedient to yes. um, following the word of God exactly. is very, very important. God is always speaking. Yeah. Um, 
make sure that you are listening and actually taking action on what he's speaking to you about because the more that you take action on those situations the more that he will speak to you yeah yeah i think we have now reached the end of this video no if you guys want a part two <laughs> let us know yeah. we had so much fun filming this like yeah this was real good yeah, I really enjoyed myself. Actually, Thank you, baby, so. for coming on the, on the Anytime. channel. Anytime. This is this is our channel now. Oh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming on. I really appreciate you. You did You're an amazing welcome. job. You did an amazing job too. Guys, please support. Um, yeah. Like, like, share, share subscribe. subscribe. Anyway, share, that this share, has share. Impacted you? Comment down in the comments section. Yeah. So bye, guys. Toodle. Bye, guys.